Добрый день, шановные глядачи нашей телепрограммы Кухня ТВ. Сегодня у нас незвычайный гость, который зазирнул на нашу кухню. Это эксперт со Слушанных Штатов Америки Роберт Брэд Данхэм, выконавший директор информационного центра по проблемам смиротного покарания, я уже сказал, в Слушанных Штатах Америки. Нашим глядачам было бы интересно доведаться, что бывает в Слушанных Штатах с питанием смиротного покарания, поскольку очень часто мы чуем от нашего урада такие аргументы, что Мовля, почему критикуется Беларусь за наявность народного покарания, когда оно применяется в Злучных Штатах. При этом наши граждане не имеют информации про все процессы, которые бывают в Злучных Штатах, про то, сколько штатов уже не применяют народное покарание, какие опошние штаты долучились до моратории эти отмены народного покарания. Про все это мы поговорим сегодня. Мое первое питание будет относно ситуации с, питаниями, с проблемой народного покарания в США. Какая огульная количество присудов, которая выносится на протяжении года и в каких штатах применяется такие виды покарания? In the United States there's a long trend in the United States away from the use of the death penalty. Uh, in the 1990s uh, there were significant numbers of death sentences, more than 300 imposed each year uh, across the United States. Last year, for the first time in 40 years, there were fewer than 50 death sentences that were imposed, uh, and uh, it's the progression of a long-term trend. What we saw Uh, what, what, we're, what we're seeing is a major change in the way the United States is thinking about the death penalty. So there have been a lot fewer death penalties imposed. We also only had uh, 28 executions last year, which is the lowest in a generation. В каких штатах на сегодняшний день уже отменено целковое смертное покарание? И, может быть, какие штаты обвестили мораторий на выполнение смертного покарания? There are 18 states that have abolished the death penalty. So we now have 32 states with the death penalty, 18 don't have it. Uh, one of those 32, Nebraska, the legislature voted this year to do away with the death penalty, uh, and the governor got a referendum put on the ballot, and the people are going to vote to see whether uh, that repeal is going to go through. So there are 18 states that have done away with the death penalty in law. Governors in four other states have declared moratoriums, so that you are not allowed to execute anybody in those states. But if we look at a combination of states that have abolished the death penalty, states where the governor has put it on hold, and states that haven't executed anybody uh, for more than 10 years, uh, a majority of states in the United States have not carried out uh, the death penalty for more than a decade. Well, and what's also um, important to know is the direction the United States is going, because we don't have states that are making the death penalty broader. We have states that are making the death penalty narrower, and we have states that are moving towards abolishing the death penalty. We also see that even in the states that keep it, they're using it a lot less. Um, when you look at the United States as a whole, it's a really big country, uh, and people think that, okay, this country has the death penalty, it's being used all over the place. In fact, 85% of the population of the United States lives in a county that hasn't executed anybody. And we found that 2% of all the counties in the United States are responsible for more than half of everybody who's been sentenced to death. So really, the use of it is very narrow, uh, and it's being used less and less. Я бы хотел доведаться относно громадской думки американцев про наявность такого покарания, бо у нас время часто мы можем почуть с посылки урада на референдум 96 года про то, что большинство громадства подтримливает такие виды покарания, и тому, мовляв, мы э, обмежеваны в своих мягчимостях, ну, урад мы оценим в Азии, о введении моратория идти в админе смертного покарания. А как американцы, что они думают про это? И те есть разница в тех штатах, где применяется смертное покарание в громадской думке, а тех, где не применяется? Well, that's really interesting, because there are differences from state to state, uh, and the response to the question depends on the question that you ask. Uh, if you ask the the just flat out question, do you support or oppose the death penalty, people are more likely to say they support it. But if you ask what's the right punishment for murder, and you give them a choice between the death penalty, life without possibility of parole, 40 years, 20 years, you find out that a majority in both states that have the death penalty and states that don't have the death penalty support the life punishment instead. Uh, in the 1980s, support for the death penalty in the United States was as high as 80%. That's fallen greatly. We're now down to 56% when you ask the first question. 
do you support life, or do you support the death penalty, yes or no? When you ask the other question, what's the appropriate punishment, the death penalty or life without parole, a majority of Americans in states that have the death penalty and in states that don't have the death penalty say that they prefer the life sentence. And I was going to say, you know, um, maybe we're catching up with the rest of the world, um, but support for the death penalty in the United States uh, is being less and less. Uh, and most importantly, when you look at who is opposing the death penalty, uh, the younger you are, the more likely you are to be opposing the death penalty. And so it looks like this might be a punishment whose time has passed. We're outgrowing it. Вы сказали, что вы долгий час являлись адвокатом, и працавал по конкретных справах людей, которые приговорены смертного покарания. И я бы просто хотел запытаться относно руху за отмену смертного покарания в США, насколько он мощный, насколько там шмат профессионалов, как вы, юристов, которые удельничают в этом руху. И какие вы были перспективы дальнейшие? Ну, вы сейчас уже оказали на это питание отмены смертного покарания целиком в всех излучных штатах, в целом, в мораторе в большинстве штатов. Well, what's interesting, you know, the United States itself doesn't really have a policy on the death penalty. Because the way the death penalty works, each state has its own criminal law. So you've got the federal government, which has a death penalty. You've got 32 different states that have the death penalty. Uh, and then you've got 18 states that don't. Um, the movement to abolish the death penalty is a separate movement uh, on a state-by-state -state level. So you have local interests, you have local public interest groups, you have local human rights groups, you have local civil rights groups uh, who are talking about the inequities in the way in which the death penalty is administered. Uh, you have a lot of academic uh, uh, studies uh, that show the death penalty doesn't work in terms of deterring crime uh, or making people safer. Uh, and then you have the organized lawyers, the, the bar associations, who for the most part are opposed to the death penalty, um, not as a matter of principle, uh, but more as a matter of fairness and that, uh, and that it doesn't seem to work. Um, we're also now seeing a very interesting political phenomenon because in the 1970s and 1980s, uh, the groups who were opposing the death penalty uh, were mostly liberal groups. Um, what we're seeing very recently uh, is that a lot of conservative groups are beginning to oppose the death penalty, and for, for, for very different reasons. Um, in the United States, people are on death row for a long time. Uh, before executions are carried out. That's to protect their rights generally uh, so that evidence of innocence or misconduct uh, can come out. Uh, but what's become clear is that the most likely outcome of your case if you're sentenced to death isn't that you're going to be executed. The most likely outcome is that your death sentence is going to be overturned in the courts. And that has led family members of murder victims uh, to say that we don't like this process. Uh, we know that you have to give somebody their rights. They have to have an opportunity in court to present evidence that they didn't do it. They have to have evidence uh, presented in court uh, about whether their lawyers did a good job. But if all these cases are being overturned um, and people's, people are not getting fair trials, we don't get any sense of finality. So the family members of murder victims are also beginning to oppose the death penalty. And the conservatives are saying, this policy doesn't work. It costs a lot of money. Um, let's treat it the same way we treat other government policies. Uh, and since the policy doesn't work, let's do away with it. So now you have liberals, uh, you have people who are family members of victims of crime, you have people who are concerned about race discrimination and unfairness, and you have people who are financial conservatives uh, who are all, uh, all opposing the death penalty. Uh, more and more Americans uh, are coming out against it. Uh, and it really does look like um, this is uh, a, a penalty whose time is passing. Thank you very much. It's also very interesting. And it's not something similar to what we have in our country. It's not something different from the situation. Because we have, for example, a problem of not long terms, which is the way the person is doing the camera of the camera, but the prisoners are being used выконывается докладнее вельми худко после их вынесения. Часом это бывает на протяжении трех месяцев, 
Ну, в среднем около года человек проводит конгресс Миротникова. И, конечно, нам сдается, что это абсолютно недостатковый час для дальнейших проверок судовых э, справ, по которым они приговорены. In our experience in the United States um, is that time is necessary uh, because there's a terrible risk of executing people who are innocent. There have been 156 people who have been sentenced to death in the United States who have later been exonerated. Uh, evidence that they are innocent, uh, evidence that they never should have been convicted in the first place, probably shouldn't have been tried at all. But in most of those cases, uh, the evidence of their innocence was not available at the time of the trial. It wasn't even available for several years after that. Uh, and without the more extended court proceedings, uh, there are people who are innocent who unquestionably would have been executed. And even with the procedural safeguards that the United States has in place, we know that innocent people have been executed. There were two people executed last year who were probably innocent. One of them, there wasn't even a crime, uh, but with bad scientific evidence, uh, the jury was convinced a crime had occurred. So there are very serious problems. Uh, new evidence is discovered later on. Uh, sometimes witnesses who've testified falsely uh, come forward, but they don't come forward right away. And without adequate time, uh, you really do increase the risk that innocent people are going to be executed. Ну что ж, я хочу подзяковать нашего гостя за эту вельми цикавую и змастонную размову. И мы бачим себе то, что и злучённые штаты не являются выключением сучасной тенденции, которая называется в свете, то, что краина, у которой применяется народное покарание, робится все менее и менее. А мы будем сподеваться, что наши краины, и Беларусь, и США, так само, долучатся до этих краин, у которых не будут применять этот негуманный и жестокий вид покарания. Дякую великим. Well, we're hoping that the U.S. will catch up with the rest of the world, and good luck with Belarus. <laughs>